Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to add contained database into SQL Server 2016 availability group. In this video, we'll be learning how to create contained database and we'll be creating availability group just for contained databases. And we'll, I'll show you that how to add that contained database into availability group and how to connect to contained database using AG Listener. We'll be creating also the listener in this video and we'll use that listener uh, from the client side to connect to that contain database and then we'll fail over uh, to our secondary replica and see that if we still can connect to our um, contained database using AG listener quickly let you know what contained databases are uh, if you want to know the detail uh, you can watch my video what are the contained database how to create it and all what are the prerequisites and all that but uh, um, for this demo purpose I just will tell you that a contained database do not require SQL Server login. It just requires the database user. You don't have to create SQL Server login uh, for uh, your client user to connect to your contained database. That's the best side of it. And I'll show you quickly uh, how when we create the contained database, we'll, we'll be creating the user as well in this video. So let me show you quickly what my setup is. These are my two servers right here, TBS Charlotte Prod and uh, TBS Prod. They are part of one cluster. So this is going to be my primary replica and TBS Prod is going to be my secondary replica. And I'll be creating a contained database on my primary replica right here. Let's go ahead and do that. New database. I'm gonna call it contained DB. underscore test or underscore demo and I will click on options and click on containment type and we'll make it partial this will make this database contain database click OK as you can see the contain database is created right here no matter what database you add into availability group it has to meet the requirement which means you have to take the full backup but uh, we will be initializing this da database onto our uh, secondary uh, production right here so let's go ahead and take the first full backup and transactional log backup of this database so I'm gonna right click and backup this database first is going to be full backup I have a separate folder for full backup. This is my full backup. And I'm going to name it contain db test dot bak. Click OK. Click OK. And click OK. Full backup is completed. I'm going to go ahead and take the transactional log backup so I can go ahead and re initialize this database to just get it ready for availability group to be added in availability group. And I have a special group for just transactional log backups. Trend backup, that's the folder. So I'm going to call it uh, contain db underscore test dot trn. Click OK. And click OK. Now this database is ready to be part of availability group. Let's go ahead and initialize it before we create an availability group and add this database to it. So I'm going to go in on my secondary replica and restore the database from the device and I'll connect to where I stored my databases Let's try one more time. I'm using UNC path. These databases are really very small, so I don't need to worry about going across the network.
and here is my full backup contains okay go to options and restore it in no recovery mode because we still have to restore our transactional log backup click OK click OK and our full backup is restored click refresh and you can see the contained database is in restore mode right here so let's go ahead and restore the transactional log as well so that we can add it in our availability group again i'm going to use eunc path to go to tech brothers charlotte fraud And this is my folder right here that I just took the transactional log backup and option. We're still gonna leave it in restore mode because we're gonna join it in availability group. Click OK. Everything is completed. Now let's refresh this and create our availability group. I'm gonna minimize this and work on our TBS Charlotte fraud, which is our primary at this moment. So I have other availability groups, but um, I'm gonna create a new one. And I'm gonna name it uh, contained AG. That's, that's what it is, contained DB AG, maybe database AG. This is my availability group name. Click next and you will see that contained db underscore demo meets the requirement. Click on that database and click next. Add the replica. In my case, TBS prod is going to be the secondary replica. And I want to make sure that it is read when it becomes secondary. So Endpoints are going to be the same. Backup preference, set it the way that you want to. Uh, I'm gonna click on primary because this is a little bit um, um, faster server for me than the secondary. So I'm gonna leave it this way. And let's go ahead and create listener as well. You have a choice just to uh, join the database and create the listener later, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and create the listener right now. So for me, the DNS name is contained uh, TBS contained C-O-N-T-P-R-O-D. This is just the name I gave. Port 1433, that's the default port. I do want it the um, static port. Let me make it bigger. Click add. You have to know the port where if you want to create the listener right now, but you don't have to create it right now. You can do it later. In my case, I do know the port, uh, the IP address that's available 168. This is the IP address that's available for me. I'm going to click OK and click and I do have permission to create the objects in my DNS by the way. So click next and click join only. Click next and click next and finish. And let's watch the progress. It's going to take a little bit of time on creating the listener right here because it takes uh, time to go to your um, Active Directory 
and create that computer object. All right, everything is successful as you can see. Click close and refresh this. And we have uh, contain DB right here, right now, the Charlotte prod, if you notice, that's primary and this is secondary. All right, let's go ahead and create the user. Um, keep in mind that I will not be creating login. I'll be creating the database user. So I'll open the database. I'll open the contain database and I'll go to security user right here and I'll right click and click new user. You can choose the language. Um, for me, it's uh, United States, so default language is fine. Default schema DBO is okay. Here, I, I'm creating SQL user with password. You have an option, different options right here. SQL user with login, um, that way you have, this, this first option, you will have to provide the login. And then second option, you have a SQL user with password. You have to provide the, the user has to put the password right in. And SQL user without the login, uh, it's uh, without the login and it will not ask you the password. Um, it has to be uh, put in, in client side. So then certification and asymmetric key. And then you can also choose Windows user and you can create that. But I'm... Um, in this demo, I'm just using SQL Server user with the password, so that option is okay for us. Click OK. Now we have contained user, and we'll connect to see that if we can connect uh, with our contained database. Okay, now we're going to connect with our contained database using our listener name. In my case, right here, availability group listener is TBS C O N T P R O D. I'm going to click on connect and click on database engine instead of uh, connecting with my primary replica I'm going to provide my listener name right here and since we created the user using SQL Server authentication I'm going to select that provide the username right here in my case it was contained underscore user and I'll provide the password and click connect I'm sorry I, I need to cancel this because the the server name is wrong is not why with that so I'll just um, TBS C O N T P R O D so click connect and it says login failure and I'll show you why so click OK and go to option and if you notice right here, uh, connect database is default. We need to provide in contain database, if you watch my previous videos, you need to provide the database name right here and then connect. In my case, it was contained db underscore demo. You have to put it right here in order to connect with your contained database and now if I click on connect, it should connect fine. And as you can see that it is connected and expand the databases and it can only see contain database db underscore demo. Let's expand, the, expand that and uh, expand the tables. We can expand that database. So now our next target is we're, we're gonna fail over uh, our availability group that we just created. Right now, uh, TBS Charlotte prod is my primary and tbs prod is my secondary once we fit once failover is completed uh, this is going to become secondary and this is going to become tbs prod is going to become primary and then we're going to connect again with our contained uh, database and see that if, after failover if we can connect with our contained database or not so let's disconnect this and right click on availability group right here and click on failover. Let me expand that. Click next. Accept the data loss, that's okay. Because it's intentional, click on here to confirm it. Click next and connect with our secondary. At this moment, TBS production is our secondary, but we're gonna make it primary. Click next 
and click finish and wait for it till the failover completes. All right, everything is successful. Click, uh, click close. And now we're going to connect again using our listener name, which was in my case TBS CONT prod and contained underscore user was my user that was connecting before failover. So I'm going to provide the password right here and click on option make sure that that database is selected this is contained database that's default for this user that is selected and click connect and as you can see it's connected and if we expand the database after failover i was able to connect to my contained database so this is it and um, i hope this helps